Greetings, greetings, and welcome to another tutorial video. Um, yeah, where to start on this? Let me actually get web browser page over here. And I'm going to go to rookat.org. We're actually going to go there because this is the wonderful people that make the new keyboard that I've got. But the video here is not about the keyboard. The video is actually about some of the software they've got. If you actually just go to Google and you look for R-O-C-C-A-T Power Grid, you'll come up with the web page for Power Grid. It is a free program. Now, the only thing it wants is for you to make a, an account here at rocat.org. That's the only thing it wants. It does not cost anything, at least initially. Uh, you do not need to actually make any purchases. Uh, this is the application that you get when you install it. You'll get things like the incoming center, the system stats, sound control. Um, Talk FX is their suite of software that lets the all your different uh, 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 ROCAT things that are RGB capable uh, talk to each other and coordinate colors. It's very interesting. Um, some apps, actually, some games like uh, Overwatch. Uh, talks to the ROCAT talk system and it will adjust your color hues on your keys and stuff based on certain situations. It's weird. Uh, I don't use it for, well, obvious reasons. I do use this. Um, I've tweaked it a little bit, changed some of the drives here and there, but for the most part, I actually do use this system stats thing. That's what sets on my page at any given point in time. But I've also created, and this is what I want to talk to you about, a custom tab. You actually go up here to this little drop down menu. You can make a new grid and it will start off as a custom grid. Once you make one, you can right click on it. Is it right click? Oh, I think you have to go to editor. Nope. Oh yeah, here we go. If you left click to highlight the grid and then you do drop down menu, you can edit rename grid and it comes up with this thing. I can even have it to where the grid will auto switch if I open up a certain program, like let's say I go down to um, OBS Studio. Where is the, I think the binaries are 64 bit OBS. There we go. So now if that application opens up and it is open right now, uh, I will actually get this thing to start up on this, this tab will switch over if I've got it open. So basically I have a little kind of a, a phone clamp, tension clamp thing for my phone that's mounted to my monitor stand. So my phone stays in a portrait mode position, upright. And this is what I see. I don't see this bottom layer of buttons. You'll see a line right here above this bottom layer of buttons. That is to denote the, the full page, the full screen page on these buttons. So basically this is the first page. And if I wanted to, there's a second page of uh, all these different buttons that I could actually make so I could scroll up and down on the actual page of buttons that I've got and add more functionality. And I'm tempted to do that right now, but I just wanted to get into the basics at first. So I made this OBS Studio Control. And again, the only thing you need to do with ROCAT is to, there's an app that is for Android and iOS. It looks onto your Wi-Fi and it hooks up to the ROCAT server that's being run by this Power Grid software and you connect to that server. The first time you connect, you'll get a prompt in your software if you want to pair that device. So it's actually very secure. It does not go through third-party servers. It is on your Wi-Fi directly to your device. There's no other middleman involved. The only time that you're going to get a middleman involved is if you go to the ROCAT store. There's the editor, add the grid. Um, they actually have a store that you can go to, the grid store right there, where they have certain third party tabs like this that have grids that have already been made. The best example of this is, uh, no, I don't, is somebody made one for the division and it's got all these preset buttons for timers and things like this. Now, some of these, these are just timers. Some of these actually have hotkeys associated with them. So you press them on your phone screen and it actually, in like these emotes, it you press them on your phone screen and it actually does that in game because it's running a macro. This is what I did here. I actually have each one of these. This is alt numpad one, two, three, four, alt numpad five, six, seven, and eight. So this holds down an alt and hits numpad whatever really, really quick. I have made each one 
And yeah, see, there we go. I can actually click on these if I want to. Uh, let's go to, I actually don't have my green screen down, but I can, you're seeing that on the recording right now. So I am actually clicking on these, right clicking to make this work. And it's actually interacting with with uh, uh, OBS in, in, in uh, uh, dynamically. Yeah, I have this if I want to, where I could. And unmute myself again, once I actually click that. I can mute system sound. Now, OBS still records. It mutes what's playing. So I don't hear anything, but it still keeps recording audio. But I, I actually kind of like that better than actually muting what OBS records. That's more useful to me. Uh, anyway, this is real easy to do. There's all these different ones that people have made as presets. Uh, there's a couple that are from Minecraft that I find debatably useful, but they were interesting enough that I thought I'd give them a whirl. Um, and I'll show you real quick. If we do a, let's see, uh, this is a custom grid number one. I'm actually going to do a completely new grid. Let's call this OBS2. Um, you can pick out an icon for it. You can actually put where you want. I'm actually going to do, uh, let's do, whoops, the number two right there. Um, you can say where you want the icon, up, down. Do you want absolute middle? I want it at the top. Or I want it at the middle, etc., etc. Very, very nice and useful. I'm actually going to drop the icon down just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to hit OK. So I have OBS2 as a unique icon. I mean, it's a unique thing. Now, if I wanted to, if we go edit, rename grid, and there's a custom icon, it actually comes with all of these folders right here that have all of these preset icons. Like if we do uh, entertainment and media, there's clapboards, like the director's chair is what I use. I'm going to use the film, uh, the uh, film roll right there because I think that's actually very, very cool. And we now actually have, uh, yes, I don't know why. That should have been edit rename. Yeah, there we go. And there it is. Okay. It just takes a second every once in a while for it to actually update the icons right here. But I have a blank grid. If I want to go over here to the editor tab, I can actually, there's all these custom functions that you can see, style gray, custom button easy, custom button master. Um, I use a lot of the macro buttons and the shortcut buttons. Macro buttons are very, very easy because you can actually just tell it, assign it shortcut. Macro, assign, like there's preset macros. Or, like, shortcut is really simple. I want to do Alt, um, and let's see, um, the period key, plus Alt. Let's do that. Okay, Alt plus period. That is actually a key now. I can do Tap, where I press it once, and it's tapping the key once. I like Hold, Repeat. As long as you're holding it, it's doing that. It is keeping the button key combination down. That's really, really useful. Now, it just has this as a preset. You can actually show the shortcut text, or we can do um, none if we want to. Text title, we could leave that blank if we wanted to. Image icon, this comes up with those preset stock. We can go back to, let's do film media. And I'm going to do clapboard, because that makes sense for me as a scene. If I wanted to add a um, text title, we could do, uh, let's do scene one. I'm actually going to expand this here real quick, and I'm going to put that across the bottom. And I'm just going to bump it up a little bit so it's not right across the very, very bottom of things. And I can collapse that. It's really, really simple. I prefer, if you're going to do hold repeat, by the way, I would say do not put a sound on there because the sound keeps playing while you're holding the button down, and that can get annoying really quick. But you might want a click noise to denote when you've actually done something. Some people might like that. Some might not. It's really simple. You can put your own icon artwork on here if you want to. It will accept that. You can change the background of the grid if you want to do. That's how they do some of the custom ones like Minecraft or um, uh, things like that. Like the division one has custom division artwork across the back. And then I just add to grid. Now, if I left click this, I am changing the settings for this. So if I actually wanted to make another button, scene two, well, I've just edited my scene one. So you have to make sure and click off of that one. And basically you're going to go back to, I want to do another shortcut. That is going to start a fresh new control editor 
template basically for a totally new button. It makes it a lot easier to do that. So it's really simple. Now here's the only clause, the only disclaimer for this entire thing. Let's go back to grids. When you start off, you're going to have the system stats and then you're gonna have a custom grid, custom grid, and then a couple of other ones. There is an in-app store for the iOS and for Android. It's both on, it's the same on both. Well, you can unlock, you only get one custom grid the second slot, basically system stats. They assume system stats is going to be a number one or it's one of the preset grids, but you can only make one custom grid of your own unless you pay 99 cents per slot to unlock it. So like my keyboard, nope, don't want to save changes. I've got all these really weird controls that I can actually do for my keyboard. Um, and I'm going to reset that snowball and Starflight, and I can upgrade, update, uh, increase the speed or all sorts of weird stuff for this new keyboard I've got. And uh, I'm going to do a separate video on the keyboard later. I do want to actually go over it, but I'm not going to now. But basically they're anticipating you're only going to have one free grid slot and you're going to want to buy extra slots. I put about three bucks into buying three extra grid slots. I'm only using two of them right now. I'm um, actually, I'm only using uh, one of them, I'm only using this is my first bought slot right here, OBS Studio. Um, I had something else here normally, and like I don't even have anything off to the side here. If I scroll to the right, um, I have had other grids, but I'm editing some other ones for custom apps and stuff. Like I want to make one for Premiere Pro so I can put some buttons to some shortcuts that I always forget for keybound shortcuts. This way I can have a nice kind of button board that I can press when I'm doing either Premiere Pro or maybe Audition or whatever, and I can just do those at the press of a key. I can have that whole page come up, that whole grid page come up, uh, whenever I'm editing in Premiere, once Premiere comes up, it'll automatically switch over. Just like OBS Studio automatically comes up every time the OBS Studio tab automatically comes up every time I start up OBS Studio itself. It's very useful. So now I have push button controls on my phone. I can reach over. This starts recording. This starts streaming. Now, something I've discovered is that periodically, if I hold this down, this will start recording because I, I use F12 to record and then Alt F12, or I think it's Control F12, Control F12 to stream. Periodically, I'll hit this and it will start streaming and recording. I don't know why, but I think there's a split second where it's doing F12 without doing the control. So I'm going to look into that and figure out why. I'll do another video on that later, but this is super simple. It's easy to poke around with. It's easy to make your own buttons. If you guys do have any questions or if you want to actually have me save this OBS control panel, like this net usage thing, if you come down here into systems, there's CPU info and CPU usage. That's where if you go to like, let's say, where is it system stats? Let's look at system stats, okay? This is the CPU info grid. This is the RAM info grid. Net usage and all of the drives, all of that is preset right here under system. There's CPU info, CPU usage, drives, capacity. You can configure a new button for each drive. Network usage, there's power options if you want to actually have a quick button to lock the system or shut it down, put it in sleep mode, whatever. I don't use such things. There is RAM info and RAM usage, which is really, really useful. You have different things you can do with time, stopwatches, timers, digital clocks, analog clocks, the whole works. There is a notification system for speaker, I mean, for TeamSpeak to display who is currently speaking. I don't use TeamSpeak anymore. I use Discord, but I thought maybe you folks would actually find some that useful. Some of you do still use that. Uh, functions, there's sound functions for muting system control. If you come over here, there is a preset, uh, ooh, where is it? Sound control, master uh, switch for basically mute for the master sound control for the microphone, uh, mute whatever music app you're currently using. Um, whatever music app is currently basically being addressed by Windows, you have the uh, play controls right here, master volume slider, but you also have this thing up here. I think this, uh, yeah, system sounds, these are the different specific things that you want to actually maybe uh, work on. But there's a lot of little functions buried in here. If you go into Windows 7 controls, there's even more. I'm working on Windows 10, by the way, and this does work fine with Windows 10. Um, there's even more stuff in here, game controllers, uh, um, you know, these bring up different control consoles and, uh, run console, um, uh, zoom in and out on a window, um, minimizing windows, maximizing, snap to the left, snap to the right, um, task bar, all sorts of controls that you can actually do with these buttons. It really is amazing. 
Plus, there's a whole bunch of open application, open document, open folder, open miscellaneous, open website, presets, more presets on opening websites, like a preset for Gmail, preset for Google, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Tons of those websites I haven't even heard of. Zing.com, don't know what it is. Uh, Design Bloat, don't know what it is. Um, I didn't think Last FM was a thing anymore, but hey, whatever. Uh, so, you know, there's tons of things buried in here that you can do. I might actually, if I can find figure out a way, I'm going to export the control panel I've actually got for OBS Studio because I know I can save it. Save grid. Yep, custom grid uh, saved as. What I might do is see if I can find a way and see here's a whole bunch of presets they already have built into this. These are mine, plus ones I've downloaded, preset grids, thing. Um, what I might do is if you guys are interested, I might post, uh, do a post on my website, bigroom.com, where you can download the file for this and then basically just import it. And I think that would actually be a thing. I'm pretty sure that'll actually work. I will go work on that and figure out how, but I thought you guys would be interested in doing this. And like I said, this is really simple. This is basically just a assign a shortcut button. It's really easy. It's basically right there, shortcut button. I do a label. I put a text label on there, a text title. I adjust its positioning using these controls right here. I put an icon on there and I even adjusted the icon position a little bit using the controls down here. And that's it. It's really simple. It's really easy. I don't know if there's any other backgrounds. There's gray. And then gray striped. Those look very, very similar to me. Um, you can do none. So it's just transparent. There's that one, blue. Um, but I think that's what I'm using for all mine. But anyway, I'm going to look into seeing a way to finding a way to save my actual preset grid posted on the website. And you guys could actually just use it and mimic it if you want to. But I really do encourage you to just experiment with this. These are all keyboard shortcuts. That's all this is. See, alt number pad one, alt number pad two, alt number pad three, alt number pad four. That's it. And that's what I use to change scenes in OBS. So, you know, right now, if I wanted to press one of these buttons, I could right click on and suddenly the recording is going to change. And then I go back to, and there we go. So it's nice and simple. It gives you a lot of controls on things. Think about putting use to power grid. It really is since it's free pretty much, unless you want to buy a whole bunch of extra button uh, grids, it's free to get started. Uh, you can keep it free as long as you want to. And it's very flexible and very, very capable. So yeah, something to think about. I'm going to put a link in the description below that goes straight to the actual Rocat Power Grid website. So you can actually take a look at it yourself. Look at the link for some of the preset stuff in there. If you really did like this video, if it's helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. Consider actually leaving a comment, leaving a like, and I would greatly appreciate it. I'll talk to you folks later. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.